Hey gamers, Chris here. This is Treat Monk's Temple, where knowledge is power. Today we're going to be discussing, fairly quickly, just mechanics. And the mechanics we're going to be discussing is what is required to be able to cast a spell when your hands are full. And the reason we're going to be discussing this is because we're going to be getting into character options and character builds. And this becomes applicable, especially when we're talking about making things like clerics or paladins or multi-classing any kind of spellcaster this becomes extremely important. So what we need to understand is that a spell can have up to three components. It can have a verbal component, a somatic component, and a material component. The verbal component is just the magic word or phrase required to cast a spell. Although it might affect things like stealth, it certainly doesn't affect your ability to cast with your hands full. The somatic and material component both affect your ability to cast with your hands full. The somatic component is the magical gestures you need to cast a spell. And the material component are the materials needed to cast a spell, and they're listed under the spell itself if it has a material component. If the material component is either consumed and or has value, you cannot cast it with your hands full regardless of what feats you have, regardless of what spell focus you have. There's no way to do it. If your hands are full, you must put a weapon away in order to cast. If a spell has a somatic component but no material component, you must have the Warcaster feat to cast it. You simply cannot cast it any other way. If a spell has a material component that is not consumed and does not have value, then you can cast it with a spell focus that is applicable to the spell. Now, not every class can use a spell focus. Ranger spells, for example, there's no way to do it with a spell focus because rangers can't use spell focuses for some reason. Druids use druidic focuses. Clerics and paladins each use holy symbols. Wizards, warlocks, and sorcerers all use arcane focuses. Bards use musical instruments. College of Swords bards can use a weapon they're proficient in. And all these spell focuses are non-interchangeable. So if you are playing, for example, a multi-classed paladin sorcerer, you cannot use the holy symbol on your shield to cast a sorcerer spell. Same thing goes with cleric druids. Some people think that it's all about arcane versus divine. It's not. Its spell focuses are not interchangeable. A druidic focus and a holy symbol are two different things. They cannot work for the other kind of spell. Now there's really two occasions where you could be holding a shield and a weapon or two weapons and one of them be a spell focus. The first is with a holy symbol. A holy symbol can be an emblem and an emblem can be on a shield. So if you are playing a cleric or a paladin, you can have an emblem on your shield that is considered to be a spell focus. That means that the arm that holds that shield is considered to be capable of accessing a material component as long as that material component is of the right class of spell and is not consumed and has no value. And it can also complete the somatic component of that spell but it can only complete the somatic component of that spell if it also has a material component. So if a spell has a somatic component, but no material component, you're out of luck. The other is with a weapon, like with a College of Swords Bard, and it follows the exact same rules. So what happens if you can't cast a spell? Well, you can sheathe your weapon. You can't sheathe your shield. Your shield requires an action to unequip and an action to equip. So if you want to do it for free, it's got to be your weapon. Now your weapon can be sheathed on your turn or drawn on your turn, but not both. That means if you sheathe your weapon so you can cast a spell, you will not have your weapon out when your turn is over, which means no attacks of opportunity with that weapon. However, on the other hand, if you have that weapon out at the end of your turn, and then you're attacked before the beginning of your next turn, then your weapon and shield are considered to be out, and you can't sheathe them so you can cast a reaction spell like a shield. And a shield is a spell that has a verbal and somatic component, but no material component, which means that spell focuses don't work for it. So this can cause a lot of issues if you don't have the Warcaster feat. Something to think about. That's it. This is a complicated subject. The idea that you can use somatic components with a hand, with a spell focus, as long as it's accessing a material component, but not if it's not accessing a material component. Oh, it gives you a headache. But... These are the rules, and as we go into character builds from now on and talk about character options, we'll be playing these rules as written. If you are a DM and you want to soften these rules, 
I recommend that you might consider taking a spell focus and saying that it can complete a somatic component regardless of whether there is a material component of that spell. Something to think about. Makes things easier for your players and easier for you to keep track of. Well, all that said, I got to tell you, I think I deserve to sit back and relax and have some fun because D&D is for everyone. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.